Welcome. It's uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. I'm Neil Aiken, uh, and I was I have been serving as a writer to writer uh, mentor, and uh, it's my pleasure to be speaking today with two of the people I've worked with in the past, Megan Pinto and Annette Wong. Um, I'm a, primarily a poet. Uh, I uh, the author of two books of poetry, um, Babbage's Dream and. Lost Country of Sight. I also write opera libretto, which is kind of a new thing, and uh, do work across a number of different genres um, in a variety of different projects. Um, but uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Megan and Annette. And I think perhaps the the first question or the first thing we should do is just turn a little time over to Megan and Annette to introduce themselves. Um, uh, where are you? Uh, oh, I'm coming from Saskatchewan, Canada, and uh, I guess Megan, do you want to go first and introduce yourself and where you're, where you're from? Where are you calling us from? Sure, thank you. I am calling in from Brooklyn, New York, and let's see, I'm a poet, and my first book is forthcoming with Four Way in fall of 2024 which I'm really excited about. And so much of our time together, Neil, was focused on that and, and really helped me get there. So yeah, what else am I? Um, I am currently an artist fellow with an organization called The Peace Studio, which is about, um, it, they work with artists and journalists to help build peace. Well, artists and journalists who are interested in building peace using their tools within um, within communities of interest. So I have that fellowship right now, and yeah, I don't know, just reading and writing. Um, what about you, Annette? Hi, everyone. It's so good to see you. Um, Megan and I actually had a chance to meet in person last yes. summer um, because we were, uh, she also went to Warren Wilson, where I just graduated this January. Um, I am calling in from Los Angeles, California, also a poet, though I dabble in fiction occasionally. Um, I, as I mentioned, I just finished my degree from, I'm wearing my Wally shirt today to represent, um, just uh, wrapped up my MFA program um, at uh, Warren Wilson. Um, and uh, in my day job, I, I do something completely different. I'm a real estate lawyer and a mom to a toddler and have another one on the way coming this May. So it's been it's been busy trying to write and read when I can, but um, time is a little bit limited. But uh, yeah, I think I did the program with Neil, the, the writer to writer program back in 2018. So it's been a while, but it's really good to, to be gathered here to be talking about the experience. I was wondering uh, if if perhaps it would be a good place to start is to to talk about why we uh, what what drew us initially to the writer to writer program. Um, where were you at the time in your own writing journey, and why did the writer to writer program feel like the next thing you wanted to do or hope to be a part of? Um, let's see. Let's go back. Let's reverse things now. Go to Annette. Yeah, so before I did the Writer to Writer program, I still hadn't started my MFA. I wasn't um, sure if, I, if that was a path I wanted to pursue. And I think Neil and I, we had a, a few conversations about whether to do that. I had done some writing conferences over the summers and things like that um, and uh, decided whether or not um, I wanted to invest in, um, in a, an actual um, degree program. And so that experience working with you, Neil, was really uh, helpful in clarifying that uh, question for me. And the answer was yes, I, I you know, did end up going and applying and you were helping me through some of the application process at the time. Um, but yeah, I was, I was looking for more structure, for a more structured way to approach writing, to think about writing. Um, I applied because another friend of um, our, mine, um, Alison Albino, who also worked with you, Neil, um, unfortunately can't join us today, but um, she told me that she um, was part of the program and um, had a good experience and um, was, uh, yeah, I, wa I wanted to try it for myself and I'm, I'm glad that I did. Um, and it, it just also um, brought such a sense of community too um, with other writers who were starting out. Um, a number of the other writers um, from writer to writer 
ended up being um, overlapping with me at Warren Wilson. <laughs> so not only Meg, but Lauren Carlson and um, my good friend Elise Durham was also actually part of my cohort at Writer to Writer and part of my cohort in my MFA program. So the, the literary community is not so big. It's actually quite small and um, uh, Writer to Writer helped um, make that world even more intimate. And um, I really appreciated the conversations we had um, across cohort for writer to writer where we got to meet other writers in a similar um, situation who were just looking to um, deepen their writing practice and um, create a better sense of community so I, I think one of the things I, I really enjoyed about our conversations is that we were both coming to creative writing from non-traditional fields um, or at least unexpected fields uh, you from law and I I had uh, I had an undergraduate degree and some work experience uh, as a computer games programmer. Uh, so that was a completely different field. And making that transition and trying to figure out, is an MFA the right thing to do? Um, is uh, how do I balance my work life and my creative life um, and my personal life? All these different things. Uh, I thought even as, as the on the mentor side, I felt it was really good to have those conversations because it reminded me um, and help me navigate some of those questions, you know, even in my own life, even after I'd made a decision about those things, it still was helpful. Megan, what, what were your thoughts going into writer to writer? Well, I, I had actually finished my MFA and I, so I graduated from my MFA in 2018. And then I, I looked at my thesis and I was like, this was really helpful, but this is not my book but I think I figured out the kind of poems I want to write by going through my thesis, going through the experience of my thesis, I should say. So by the time I applied to Writer to Writer, which was the fall of 2021, and then into the winter of 2022, I, I had a manuscript. I had gotten to about, I think it was 60 pages. And I remember going back and forth about the application because I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't apply if I already have an MFA. But then I was like, well, I guess they can tell me that after I've after I've submitted my application. And I just remember looking at the questions and being really honest about what I wanted. And I remember um, my manuscript, I had recently written a lyric essay in the middle and that's what I submitted as my work sample. And I talked about how ordering how I wanted to like really work through questions of what does it mean to order a manuscript and um, questions about pacing and, and structure. And, and that I just, I knew I could do it, but I wanted to learn through having a conversation that I felt like I'd kind of taken myself as far as I could go in terms of reading books and, and kind of annotating the structure on my own. So that's what, prompted me to apply. And then, yeah, it, it obviously really worked out because you picked my application. And I think both in terms of the content of the manuscript, but then also the like craft questions that I was interested in, it felt like a really great fit. And I, and it was what helped me get my manuscript ready to submit. And then I submitted it and then I, yeah. So it, it was just like a really, incredible. It was like one of those things where it was, oh, I'm right where I need to be doing what I need to do. And all I had to do was like, be honest, which not not that I like walk around lying in my applications, but I think sometimes it's easy to overthink and be like, well, what, what am I supposed to say? Or what do they want me to say? And I remember when I found out I got it, I was like, oh, that's like a good reminder of that I don't have to perform a kind of like writer persona that I can just actually be who I am and say where I'm at and then the right opportunities will will be there for me when the time's right. So that's that's kind of where I was at spiritually, cosmically. I, I think you make an excellent point. And I, I think this is very true when, when I'm looking at the different uh, applications that come through and they give us uh, they give us a small set of of applications to consider after they've uh, after you know they usually hear from us like this is what i'm hoping to do this year as a mentor here these are the the type of people or the type of um 
questions that I hope to be able to help people with. And then they'll try to provide us with a list of, of potential um, mentees to work with, writers to work with. And the thing that I'm always drawn to most out of that stack will be the applications, which people are really honest, brutally honest about where they're at. And I, I think it is hard. It's scary to do that, is to really look closely at ourselves in our writing and to say, this, this is something I feel like I need to have a conversation with someone about, or these are things that I feel like are working well, and these are the things that I really I don't know what the next step is, or there's something about this manuscript that I, I can't quite put a finger on as being not quite right. Um, those are hard conversations and hard things to say, but that's actually what helps mentors decide whether or not it's, you know, this is a project or this is a person that, you know, the person's questions are the type of questions that we can help with. Um, so I think that's really, really critical, like advice that I would give to anyone applying is just don't be afraid to just be yourself and don't worry about performing. Like you said, don't perform something that you don't really feel inside. So I think that's that's kind of key. Um, yeah. Annette, any thoughts on that? Absolutely. I think if you, for your, any applicant to get the most out of the experience too, being um, completely candid about what you, where you are and what you hope to gain will only ensure the best match with the mentor that um, is able to meet you where you are. And so I would um, concur with what uh, both of you are saying about being very uh, transparent about what you hope to accomplish and where you're at. What, what did you find was the most surprising part of the, the process of working with, uh, seems kind of weird to say working with me, but <laughs> working with a mentor? Um, were, were there things that you didn't anticipate or things that were unexpected, unexpectedly helpful or not helpful in that process? And I'm a big kid. I can take whatever you say. <laughs> um, I think for me, I guess I, I just wasn't expecting to get exactly what I needed. Like it was actually really simple. And I feel like when we started working together, the two big things on my, that the two things on my list that I wanted to practice were ordering, like thinking about ordering within a manuscript and then line breaks. Um, and that I felt like the line breaks I was making felt confused. Like I, I had just gotten so confused and I had lost the, the, a sense of like my own music or the music I was trying to create. And I feel like when I spoke about it, that was really well received and you knew exactly what I was talking about. And then we had exercises. Um, and I, so like for the ordering, um, you would send me poems from a book I, I hadn't read and out of order. And then I would read all of them and then put them in an order I think made sense. And then we'd go through and we'd talk about why, why this order. And, and then eventually we'd look at how it was ordered in the book. And that was really simple, but really, really valuable. Um, for me, because then then I had this like reference, I could go back after our conversation and look at the book, look at their structure versus my structure. And similarly with the line breaks, just thinking about, um, we looked at so many different forms and so many different formal choices. And those conversations over a long period of time are what just made me ultimately feel more confident because I was like talking about it um, I, I don't know, across different forms, but also like, oh, we're really focused on this poem and like, okay, now we're talking about a draft of a new poem I wrote. So it, it just felt surprising how like personalized it could be. And that was like absolutely what I needed. And I'm very grateful, which I've expressed before this call, but. <laughs> It's been a while since we worked together. So, um, but I will say like something that really stood out about our experience is that Neil, I really appreciate how you try to introduce me to other people in the community, the literary community here in LA. I think you 
got me in touch with Muriel Lung and I went to one of her readings um, here in LA. Um, and now I like to follow her on Instagram. Um, but just, just to, yeah, to like extend that sense of community. And I'm, um, that was something that you encouraged me to do. And, um, you know, that was a surprising, um, byproduct of the program. It's not something you had to do. Um, but the chance to meet other APIA writers in, um, this area, um, was much welcome and much appreciated. So thank you for that. Yeah, I, I think a big part of, you know, well, well, writer to writer may sound like a very like singular exchange of ideas. I think part of it hopefully is an opportunity to connect people um, to other writers and other thinkers that we can resonate with, we can learn from. And I love, I love uh, the fact that like every person I've worked with, this has been a two way exchange of ideas of book referrals of people to get in contact with i learn something in those conversations and i also try to connect people with with others that i think they're going to resonate with or learn something from um or are just great people and you should get to know uh, so i i think um allison's not here but allison was in new york at the time still in new york and um and when I started working with her, she was uh, she expressed a, a sense of being really isolated and not really connected at all with any of the Asian American literary, um, you know, organizations or with the readings or with the other people. And she kind of knew people on the periphery, but was really shy about opening up and talking to people. And so I I nudged her because she lived so close to so many people that shared a very common uh love of of, uh, of literature and of poetry and um and so you know i i think that's that's uh and it did it opened up to a lot of great friendships and then i would see on her instagram all these pictures of all the great meals that they had that i was not able to partake of because i was in the wrong country or the wrong part of the world um <laughs> but but it is really lovely like how how community can can come out of you know, even just the, the start of that conversation between two people. Um, uh, what what are some of the things that you've learned from our exchanges, our discussions that you have been able to, um, oh, well, I guess maybe a better way to phrase this is like, in what ways has the Writer to Writer program helped you, um, like influenced you, whether it's been in terms of how you've interacted with others when you you move into your own mentorship roles and i know i think both of you do help others and, and teach in some capacity you know annette does that and megan you do that and i think in what ways are you drawing on the experiences of uh, the writer to writer program um and uh, have you considered um being a mentor in the writer to writer program I'd love to pay it forward one day. I think you have to have a book first, maybe, to be able to do that. So hopefully one day when a book comes out, I, I, I would love to give back. But I, I think what our uh, experience taught me was um, the importance, of, or the Writer to Writer program itself is very structured, which I really appreciated because there are certain topics that you cover um, kind of session by session. And um, sometimes I feel like mentorship can be this very free flowing thing um, without much structure. And I just really appreciated the way that the program uh, the AWP um, has different topics um, uh, between each um, uh, conversation. I think there was one on um, like publishing, there was probably one on revising. I don't quite remember off the top of my head right now, but um, you know, having some sort of thematic organization to how I might uh, mentor future prospective writers going forward, um, I think is helpful. Um, and then there's also a sense of accountability from our exchanges. Neil, I think you would assign, um, if not assignments, then um, like tasks to complete between our, our conversations. And um, that was really helpful just to keep um, things moving forward in terms of revision or um, generating new work. Um, and I think having that 
aspect of a concrete to do um, where um, if, especially if you're mentoring um, uh, an aspiring writer, um, you know, being able to monitor progress and um, have an ongoing conversation about the work as it evolves um, is very fruitful. Um, and yeah, the, the continuity of the conversation um, through those exchanges by looking at the work as it changes, um, I, I think that's what I would carry forward. Yeah, I also agree, Annette, that the structure, um, just of the program itself is very helpful. And I think when I think about what I would, I would definitely be interested in mentoring. I think I need to get through the process of putting together my own book. And I'm really excited to learn what that will be like as it goes into editing and um, proofing and stuff. But I think I would just take forward the like check-ins and communication. I feel like we did that a lot at like at the end of each session thinking about, okay, well, if we have X amount of weeks left, what else do I want to work on? Oh, you know, like we, we were talking about this, but actually I just read this thing. Why don't we try this for the next session? Um, and I, yeah, the homework, being kind of like an organic thing that was coming out each assignment came out of the conversation that we just had as opposed to like um coming in and being like okay here are the six things i'm gonna do that there was this level of okay we both know that we want to accomplish something and there's some sense of that goal but then letting that kind of organically come out of the discussions i think is really important Yeah, as I, I agree. I, I think as a mentor, really helpful about having that structure to fall back on to to consider that as whether it's the trajectory of what we're going to cover in the in the coming weeks, and then you have a sense of like, oh, we'll probably cover this is a question that we can actually defer for a week, or we can prepare for that in some way. Um, well, not feeling absolutely beholden to like going down a checklist and saying, we have to talk about this, 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 and this, um, that there's, you know, I think this is in general with mentoring. I try to, to, to think about like, how do we organically, um, help, you know, help you achieve whatever goal it was that you set out to do at the beginning of the, of the project or of the, of the period of time. You know, if you say I, I have this manuscript and there are things I want to work on specifically to the manuscript, or I have some questions, craft oriented questions that are tied to this particular body of work, or if it's a broader question, a professional question about development, or it's, um, you know, sometimes it's just, a, you know, some of the people I've worked with, it's been a lack of familiarity with, with, um, you know, if they're sitting in an MFA program or have come through some sort of community workshop or undergraduate program in which they've had some sort of creative writing experience, but have felt that it has not really provided them with the familiarity with the, the depth of knowledge they've been looking for about, um, about writers whose experiences, whose lived experiences feel closer to their own. Um, you know, if, if you're sitting in a workshop as the only person of color and the feedback seems to be very targeted from a perspective of what you're assumed to be performing or assumed to be representing or, you know, as an ambassador or as, as some sort of a stand-in for a larger community, it can feel frustrating when you want to write something very different or the vision in mind is something very different and people keep trying to push you. So I, I think like the flexibility to have um, the each session turn and evolve in a way that matches the particular needs of each person that we're working with, I think is key rather than to have one vision, one curriculum, and one set of questions or conversations that are meant to apply to everyone. Um, 
that in the loose framework framework that we're given, I think is a really superior model to work with because it gives us room to breathe, room to explore, and room to adapt and change as we need to. So I guess a, another question we should explore is uh, what what are you doing now? What are your, uh, we, we heard a little bit about Megan's got the, the book that's uh, in process right now, getting closer to that finish line of, of being ready to go out for publication. Or actually, I guess it's accepted now. It's just in the editing mode right now. Um, and and that you just finished your MFA program. So what what's uh, next on the horizon for both of you? I just got my degree like 11 days ago. <laughs> so came back from North Carolina. Um, uh, yeah, last week, last Saturday. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm trying to figure out what my plan is going forward. I have a thesis um, manuscript from the program that I'm hoping to turn into a book. So I'll need to revise and add new poems. Um, I also did a fiction semester while I was getting my MFA. Um, and I have some ideas that I'd like to turn into a longer piece, a novel um, idea that I'd like to work on. Um, but this is all like with the knowledge that I have a baby on the way in May. So um, I'm going to do what I can before then. Um, but just to continue engaging with the craft, I think um, one of the tools from our time together, Neil, as well as um, uh, during the MFA certainly too, is is just the importance of continuing to nourish oneself creatively by by reading a variety of different things. Um, I think you put me on Elaine Scarry, um, the I forgot the name of her book, something about the pain in the body. Um, but just the wide variety of reading that one can do to inform one's work um, and uh, with, a, with a craft lens and a kind of investigative eye towards um, how uh, other writers do things that you might want to borrow or incorporate. Um, you know, that's kind of my uh, large amorphous task before me is to figure out what is it that I want to learn? What do I think will benefit me and my work going forward? Um, and there isn't a lot of time. There's like four months to like try and get a plan together before everything goes out the window again for a couple months. <laughs> but um, that's, that's the goal is to get a little bit more organized, um, try to make some headway on the creative writing projects and, and read a lot. So. That's so exciting, Annette, and so cool that you took a fiction semester. Um, I love all of that. Um, let's see, what am I up to? I, so I think other than, I'm waiting on my editorial letter from Four Way, which will say like, here's what we think is working and maybe here's what we think you should change and. I don't really know what it's going to be because it'll be my first time getting a letter like that, but that will sort of dictate, I imagine, the poetry writing I'm doing this spring. I And then for the fellowship that I mentioned with the Peace Studio, it, it's really cool because the prompt for the project is is very broad, and so we're able to really tailor it to our own interests and have it evolve organically, much like we're talking about with this process. Um, so my project right now is focused on adult learners outside of academia. And I, I'm i still open to how it's going to evolve, but I would like to work with women or non-binary people that are in shelters in and like transitional homes. And so that has started out with me just volunteering because I, I have ideas for what could, um, I have a lot of ideas about what poetry could do, but I really want it to come from like the needs of the community that I'm working with. So I'm partnering because of the fellowship, I'm able to like pay a good friend of mine who's a social worker and a dance therapist to also be my partner. So that way I can make sure the work is trauma informed. And also I, it's nice to just have a collaborator. Um, so this month has been about volunteering and it has just been incredible. Um, 
I'm really grateful for the fellowship because I don't think I would have, I've had these ideas, but I don't think I would have thought like, oh, I could just go do that. I think I would have waited for permission or I don't know, another degree or something. But um, instead I've just been um, like in, in the kitchen, serving food, and then when the food serving calms down, then I'm just able to talk uh, with the people who live there or the people who work there. And um, the conversations I've had have just been wonderful. And I'm really, really grateful for this opportunity. And I'm really grateful that my life and the, the things that present, presented themselves have led me to a place where I'm able to think about poetry and what poetry can do. Um, I don't know, it, in the world that like, there is a there is this 18 year old inside me that does think that absolutely thinks like art matters and art changes lives. And I don't know, maybe that's not the 18 year old, maybe that's just me. But Anyways, that's that's kind of what I'm working on right now. So the writing is very focused, but then the exploration or application of like, what sort of writer do I want to be in the world? That question feels really big right now. And um, yeah, I'm I'm in the midst of it, in the midst of lots of listening and deep reading. Neil, I wrote to Neil and and he recommended a book, the the Radiant liar liar how do i pronounce that liar um and it's about like the history of the lyric um and it's it's so good so the writing recommendations go on if you do this program <laughs> you'll you'll never be short for writing rec reading recommendations but yeah i think um i'm trying to think if i'm doing anything else read and then just reading i don't know i um, I put a lot of pressure on myself to read, to like, I have these expectations around reading and this year I'm really trying to let it go and just read for fun and read slowly. Cause I think in the past I was always like, I have to read a certain number of books and I don't know why I decided that, <laughs> but I'm trying to let that go and just be present with the book that's in front of me. So that's what I'm working on. I, I think it's uh, both of you. It's wonderful. And I, I think that's very true too about um, there's something really important about figuring out what our relationship is with the world as a writer. And it's something we can't figure out entirely academically. We have to be on the front line in, in some way. We have to be engaged with other people and the the stuff of life, the materiality of life and the difficulty and, and struggles of ourselves, our family members, and our community in order to really write. If it's an intellectual academic exercise, then it often feels empty in some way. And so I, I think that's, you know, I applaud you for, for being out there in, in volunteering. And I think it's, um, and I, I think Annette too, you know, it's just, uh, being unafraid to live the actual life of being a human being <laughs> as opposed to like just hiding away somewhere in a corner um which i feel like i'm sometimes describing myself because uh you know i'll hide away in my my sort of worn of books and and that's that's where i live um but i also try to be out in the world as well um but yeah, it, it's it's just uh, it's really exciting. One of the things that has happened to me in the last uh, few years is I had the opportunity to serve as the writer in residence for my local public library system, and it was a wonderful. This is Canada, so we actually got paid like real money to to have like a ten month position where I worked one day a week, uh, which is wonderful and. I developed programming from the for the library. I helped them set up an author reading series. I helped them do all sorts of different things. And one of the things that happened by the end of that was as much as I really enjoyed all the mentoring and all the other things, I started to realize there's a part of me that wants to stay in the library. And um, 
so much so that I ended up, uh, and I'm waiting March about AWP time, I'll find out, but I've applied for a master's in library and information science at, at UBC, you know, in the hopes of, of going through a two-year library program uh, so that I can actually work professionally in the library. Um, and it's something that I think uh, is part of that desire to connect with with the world, to be outside of my, my little hermit den <laughs> cell that I hide in and be out in the world and engaged in conversation with others and learning from others and having that feed me spiritually, emotionally, um, and inspire me um, so that when I write, I'm writing not just solely about something really um, like specific and internal to myself, but it's also something that's in dialogue with this larger world that I haven't cut myself off from. Um, so I, I think that's that's like uh, something that's definitely happened. And then the other thing that, that's definitely happened is, uh, you know, I started uh, working, I've been working with composers over the last several years, but uh, one of them approached me to do an opera, and now we're doing a full-length opera. <laughs> and it's something that I wouldn't have considered, you know, maybe five, ten years ago as even being something I would be doing. But again, it's exciting to see the ways in which the work that we do in one genre, like poetry, can open a door and open a conversation with other forms of art that then broaden the conversation and the, the reach of what we're doing to, to a much larger audience. Um, and then, you know, composers are amazing. They can make something happen that carries us beyond language and, and really transport us. So, it's been an education, a very humbling education to work with people in other art forms and to see what's possible and to be reminded that there are so many different ways of looking at beauty, looking at elegy, looking at um, just the the existence of being a human being um, with other human beings in the world. I think we have like a little bit of time here that we could actually uh, each read something if that works for you. Um, Annette, do you want to lead us off and read something for us? Oh, sure. Um, let me pull up a poem from my manuscript. So I'll just read um, one of the poems that I put together for um, my MFA manuscript. And uh, it's called Butterfly. Butterfly. Because I don't know the word for moth or bee in Mandarin, I tell my son every fluttering insect is butterfly. The black stink beetle, the fat June bug, the ineradicable flies circling the kitchen sink. Is this not parenthood? to cast the world brighter than it is, insisting on beauty in places it isn't. And when the man on the street hears my sing-song Chinese and hisses, go back to where you came from. I will tell my son until he is old enough to understand, big enough to fight back. These words were merely meant to wish us safe passage. So beautiful. Thank you. I, I have to admit, I, I this is the second time I'm hearing this because I attended Annette's uh, MFA graduation virtually. Uh, and so that was a delight to hear it again. Thank you. Uh, Megan, would you like to go next? Sure. Uh, in the spirit of writer to writer, maybe I'll read something new that's still in process, but definitely has the shape of a poem. This is called Snowscapes. A great procession is honking across the ice where geese call out to one another before taking off in flocks. Water makes their landing seem soft. Some of them are playing and some place each webbed foot down, down carefully over the ice 
while some amble across the beach, stopping at times to prod chicken bones and bottle caps scattered along the shore. In the south where I grew up, snow would grace us momentarily, and I felt it was a lapse in the landscape's memory. For a few hours, for a few days, I was betrayed by my cotton sweatpants and tennis shoes. All my life, I've had doubt in the spiritual sense. In the South, a familiar poster plastered on the walls of every school, waiting room, a pair of lone footprints trailing in the sand. The speaker's voice, a man, asks God, if you are with me, then where are your feet? And God says, who do you think carried you through the deep, dark waters across an open sea? The nun's habit swept against the floor, collecting dust as fine as what was falling outside. Of the landscape, a sudden quiet, even when the birds flocked to our gardens for nourishment. Some say love is shapeless, but still we try to measure it in words, breath, feet. Others, love is not shapeless, but embodied like those beams of light where the geese now rest, water laps the ice. That's gorgeous, Megan. Annette stole my word, gorgeous. I, I <laughs> love the language. D does it have a title right now? I, th I think right now it's snow. It snowscapes right now. Um, I, yeah. it, it's like, it also kind of feels if you want to get a little bit more, um, I don't know, go in a slightly different direction, but the shape of a poem, like the way you introduced Ooh. it, I thought was really beautiful. And then the, the idea of shape keeps recurring throughout there. Yeah. Rain that down. I love that yeah. idea. Thank you. Look, we're doing a little mentoring right now. <laughs> <laughs> Real time. Real, Real time. time. Mentoring. Yeah. Thank okay. You. So this one, this one's from my as yet untitled and somewhat amorphous manuscript. Um, this is entitled After. I don't recall what we did that summer other than carry ourselves from place to place with the memory of my father rattling about in my heart grown empty, like an old house forgotten in the prairie, just a shell exposed to the wind and storms. We crossed the plains again, the car a swiftly hurdling silence, my mother staring at the emptied road, her eyes scanning for a rogue deer. I could only see the ghostly drifts of snow, not snow, just heat and vapor, the barely visible, the never was or already gone. At the heart of the trip, there's a long stretch of open nothing, a sigh of sorts, what my body does now, even years later. There's only words, only the wind and the sun and the fields, only the towns on the verge of forgetting everything. My mother says nothing here. I say nothing as well. We lay our nothings side by side. We stare into the blankness. I think of my father. I think of his grave, of the earth, of the body vanished into flame of the dust and ash, of the way language is a vapor, memory an evaporation, or perhaps only a sublimation, how we don't see it happen, that final shift of states, the way words become shuttered cities or ghosts or just the shadows burned into surfaces after the world ends in brilliant light, how in the perfect darkness fish move sightless, their hearts still beating. That ending, oh my God. Also like the towns, what was it? The towns forgetting that. On the ending. verge of forgetting everything. Yes, oh my goodness. And if you drive through the Midwest, that's what it feels like. So many small towns on the verge are just completely disappearing. And uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I was equally surprised when I was writing the poem to get to that ending with the fish. It's like, where did those fish come from? <laughs> That's the best surprise fish. <laughs> that was so moving, Neil, that 
words like shuttered cities. I love that line. Yeah. So this is, uh, I am definitely a slow writer. I feel like every book project is a, is a labor and a struggle sometimes because I feel like I'm slowly inching my way through making sense of it. Um, so some years I'm actively writing a lot and some years I'm in the research and reading and thinking and living phase of writing and absorbing and making notes. And then sometimes it turns into a following year that's a fruitful year with, with lots of, of productivity. And sometimes it just takes longer. But uh, I, I think, you know, as I, I've gotten used to that idea that, that uh, I don't need to measure myself against the uh, production rate of the next writer. You know, <laughs> it's like some people are just going to be fast writers and then there are going to be people like me that work really slow. <laughs> I think that's something we talked a lot about during my mentorship with you as well, because I, I don't know, there's such like weird first book pressure energy, just like the way that we all collectively think about first books. And I, and I had like, just thought myself into a corner. Um, but to like, yeah, I feel like we just talked a lot about process and like letting each poem take the time it's going to take letting revision, the book, all of it, take what the time it's gonna take. Um, and I I really appreciate that. And I definitely internalized it because this past year, since our mentorship, I've just felt so much calmer and more at peace. And then because of that, just much more present in the thinking and writing and reading that I have been doing, which is the, that's the fun part, like worrying about I don't even know, like no one's thinking about me, <laughs> you know, like no, people are thinking about themselves. So made up pressure. In our final uh, bit here, perhaps we can, do you have any advice to anyone that is considering applying for the writer to writer program? Um, you know, anything you would like to, to say or suggest or advise them? On to you. Annette, do you want to go first? do it. <laughs> There's really nothing um, more complicated than that. Just, you know, if you're interested in it, if it sounds like something that you would enjoy and benefit from, um, you know, get, get an application together. And as we talked about, you know, be, be transparent about what you hope to get out of it and where you're coming from. Um, and yeah, be, be prepared to come away with um, a, a more enriched sense of community and yourself as a writer, I think. Um, it's a very worthwhile endeavor. And if you have a chance to also, um, now that uh, AWP is back in person, to, to go to AWP and to to meet everybody, um, there's usually a reception for the writer to writer mentees. Um, do it because it's, it's so lovely to be in a room with um, everybody else who's been through the program. And I would add that if you apply and get rejected, just apply again. Because I, I was rejected the first time I applied and I've been rejected from lots of things. And then I've applied again and, you know, it's worked out or it hasn't. But yeah, I wouldn't let something like a rejection stand in your way. of Because also my application changed a lot between the first time and the second time. And, and I don't know who was on the other end of like who was in the reading pool or who the mentors were, because I also know the process is like it, which I think Neil mentioned, I think it gets like somewhat maybe not weeded out or like a certain select amount of applications are then handed off to the mentor to pick who to work with, but that stuff is always changing too. So just keep applying to everything. Yeah, and I, I would add that clarification too. It is probably the most brutal and difficult thing as a mentor to sit with two or three really outstanding applications knowing that you can only choose one and that someone that you would love to work with is going to get a notice saying that, well, you can hope that there's another mentor that will pick them up. But if the, the other mentor doesn't pick it up, then it's going to have to wait until next season for that person to try again. And so that is why it's absolutely worth trying again. 
And as Megan noted, you, you evolve, your application evolves, your perspective as to what you're trying to do um, changes. And all those things mean it's worthwhile to apply again and again and again. But it is a wonderful program. And do do see us, do chat with us if you see us at the reception. Um, always, always excited to, to talk to people. And uh, I think that's probably it for us. So thank you uh, for uh, tuning in and checking us out and uh, uh, listening to our, our lovely conversation today with Megan and Annette. And I hope in some small way this provides you uh, insight into uh, the world of uh, the Writer to Writer program and inspires you uh, either to, to apply to be a mentor or apply to be a mentee. Um, whatever way you come to us, um, it is a transformative experience and well, something I really do cherish. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be a part of. Um, so thank you all. And thank you, Megan. And thank you, Annette. And thank, thank you, you, AWP. Thank you.